going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about a TV show, that being the iconic, beloved Columbo. But not the whole series, that would be far too daunting a task to attempt in one video. No, today I'd like to talk about Prescription Murder, the pilot movie, actually the first of two pilot movies that this series got. It originally aired in 1968, a full three years before the second pilot that started the regular series off. Now, I keep saying this is a pilot movie, but I believe it was originally intended as one of the regular TV movies of the week, but due to how popular it was, NBC started the wheels in motion that led to the show that everyone remembers. Saying everyone might be pushing it these days, but those who have good taste in quality detective shows, they remember it. But before I get into the film itself, a little bit of backstory on my history with Columbo. I remember watching this pilot episode back when I was quite young, probably on the Columbia House VHS tape that my parents had, and it's always stuck with me. Even watching it now, and I haven't seen it in between, there were certain shots and moments that flashed back into my memory, like the look of the penthouse apartment where Gene Barry's character and his wife live, or his office and talking to the girlfriend character there. Somehow, that all made an impact on me. After that, I remember watching a smattering of random episodes over the years, maybe even a couple of the TV movies that started up again in the late 80s, but I'd never been a dedicated fan. But let me tell you, after watching Prescription Murder again, I think that's going to change, because it's a really amazing episode. And the first thing that always resonated in my memory is the idea of a perfect murder. Between this and Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, this element of a completely prepared killer and a meticulously planned crime has always fascinated me. And then putting a brilliant detective up against that seemingly insurmountable challenge is pretty thrilling. I am going to talk about Peter Falk yet, but I'll wait to get to him, kind of like the way this movie also delays his introduction. But the character that we're introduced to first is Dr. Ray Fleming, as played by Gene Barry. And Gene Barry is perfect casting. I feel like he usually acts in a similar way in everything I remember him from, be that Matt Masterson or Burke's Law. He's the definition of the kind of actor that was never a huge movie star, but a consummate TV star. And he brings his full acting power to this villainous role. He's suave, debonair, and smooth, but also overconfident and arrogant. Something that was interesting to read was that this story of prescription murder was originally a stage play, and that play was an adaptation of a TV drama, part of the Chevy Mystery Show back in 1960. But in the play, the murderous doctor character was played by Joseph Cotton, who I've mentioned numerous times on this channel. He's a favorite actor of mine from the Golden Age, and I can only imagine the charm and cunning that he would have brought to the role. His Uncle Charlie in Shadow of a Doubt is the only proof you'd need that he can play a fantastic villain, but he did play others over the years as well. But back to Gene Barry. The entire opening act centers around him, and he's completely compelling and also unnerving. Take, for instance, his performance during the moments leading up to the murder of his wife. I should explain, the plot focuses on a psychiatrist that has fallen for a much younger woman and murders his wife, which sets the dogged Lieutenant Columbo on his trail. Now normally, a crucial detail like that would be considered a spoiler, but for anyone watching this that is not aware, the entire Columbo series has the unique conceit of being what was termed a how catch him rather than a whodunit. Each episode would begin by following someone that was about to commit a murder, they do, and then the story becomes one in which we follow Columbo working his way through the clues, or lack of them, to discover the identity of the killer. Typically you'd think that's a bad decision, having the audience several steps ahead of your lead detective, but it works because it's different, and sets the series apart from the myriad of other crime shows out there. And also, it takes the television mystery and turns it into a cat and mouse game, and it's arguable who is the cat and who is the mouse depending on the scene or at what point in the episode. But it takes it out of the usual dizzying list of suspects that you have to keep track of style of mystery and turns it into something else. And that element is present right from this first pilot movie. Before I get to Peter Falk, I have to quickly mention that he was not the first actor to play Columbo. The very first was Burt Freed in that Chevy Mystery Program episode entitled Enough Rope. Burt Freed was a character actor that showed up in movies and probably every TV show made between the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I think even the 80s. The next Columbo, this one on stage taking on Joseph Cotton, was none other than Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell, of course, a mainstay in the films of John Ford and Frank Capra, 
He appeared in so many legendary films of the 30s and 40s in particular, but when it came time to bring the character back to TV, the first choices were apparently Lee J. Cobb or Bing Crosby. Lee J. Cobb would likely have been an altogether more gruff version of the character, and Bing Crosby, an immensely talented singer and actor in his own right, but I'm really not sure what that series would have looked like. I almost wish they would have shot one just for us to look back on now. It makes you really wonder. But of course, Peter Falk got the role and with it made television history. And what is so impressive about his performance in Prescription Murder is how formed and fleshed out the characterization already is. He looks a little different than he would become. His haircut is more clean cut. His suit is all put together and just as a whole he looks less rumpled, a favorite word that is used to describe this character. But other than those outward appearance differences, almost everything else is there. His absent-minded musings, his repeated irritating questions, seemingly about insignificant details, his not having a pencil on him, the first use of his just one more thing catchphrase. It's not worded exactly like that, but close enough. And it's amazing. This is, again, three years before the series proper began, but he's already built this performance and it's no wonder he became so popular. One thing that I was not expecting was the way in which he interrogates the girlfriend character. He becomes very intimidating, laying out for her how he's going to tear her life apart until she breaks down and tells him the truth. He's pretty ferocious, you could say, and I don't remember him behaving that way in the other episodes I've seen. So I'm curious if that aspect will rear its head down the line. Going along with that is the idea of Columbo potentially going too far, pushing someone into doing something rash or dangerous to themselves due to the pressure he's applying, and that too would be an interesting thing to explore, both in his character and to those he's affecting. But Peter Falk and Gene Barry are incredible together, and the fact that Columbo's opponent is a psychiatrist was perfect, because it's such an organic way to discover even more about Columbo through him. Because Dr. Fleming sees through all of his tricks and explains them back to Columbo. The feigned, almost simple-mindedness, the use of flattery, presenting this completely unassuming demeanor, and he lays it all out for us to appreciate if we haven't already caught on by ourselves. The dialogue is wonderful with the back and forth that they exchange, the use of hypothetical scenarios that are anything but. Anytime the two of them share the screen, it's so well done. Elsewhere in the cast is Nina Fosh, playing the wife that gets murdered, Catherine Justice as the young girlfriend, perennial TV guest star William Wyndham as a district attorney who's a little too friendly with the good Dr. Fleming, and all of them are great casting. This show is known for the big name celebrity murderers that attracted, and I love that, but also the supporting cast around them is often filled with familiar faces and names. The casting department did a good job all around. It was directed by Richard Irving, and just as one example of his direction that I loved, was the murder scene. So often in TV shows now, we typically only see a murder happen either when we don't know who's doing it or we're following an insane serial killer or something like that. So seldom do we witness a regular guy commit a murder. And Richard Irving shoots this scene without any grotesque imagery, nothing overblown about it. Instead, it's dripping with suspense as Gene Barry slowly walks up behind his wife, having a couple of false starts before he actually begins strangling her. There are quick cuts between tight close-ups on his face, then to her hand tightening on this curtain that she's standing beside, then back to his face, these tiny beads of sweat appearing across his brow. It's very tense. For another Hitchcock reference, it reminded me of the strangulation scene in Torn Curtain with Paul Newman, and just stands out both in the choice of shots and editing style. But also, that pairing of seeing nothing overtly violent and yet the impact being felt so strongly. The show also looks really great, with beautiful sets. I guess there's a reason why they stayed in my memory all these years. There is limited location work, but what there is is such a time capsule of late 1960s California. And that movie set where the actress girlfriend character has her particularly blunt interrogation scene with Columbo is surprisingly huge and detailed. I don't know if it was built just for this show. It almost seems like it would have been something that Universal or NBC already had constructed for something else being shot around the same time, but I have no idea. It's some sort of Roman palace or something along those lines. If anyone knows that this set shows up in a different movie from around that time, please let me know. I couldn't find anything about it online, but I'd be very curious to find out. The conclusion of the mystery is great, and it basically has to come down to a confession. The plan is so 
foolproof, there is no evidence to be found. But I loved Columbo's use of the murderer's plan against him, using a body double, all of that. It felt very satisfying to me. So I'm looking forward to continuing to watch this series and seeing if the show's style changed over time. This is an excellent beginning to it, setting the standard for what would continue over the next few decades, and Peter Falk demonstrates why this character was and still is beloved. If you've never watched this show, start here. I'd highly recommend it. Thanks so much for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, please head on over to Hildebrand Productions to check out some more of my reviews. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again, and adios for now.